while I think it can benefit you uh, to work on the hook and to make sexy videos like that, I think you have to shift your mind from creating content for the algorithm to just document your own journey. Hey everybody, welcome to the Jeremy Redmond. We have a very, very, very cool interview guest. Um, a lot of these solopreneurs and small team builders out there, which is most of this channel, as we gear to, and we kind of niche into the automation and how they fit into these small teams and how you can automate most, most of your stuff. We have Mike Strives today from Upvoti, who we've white labeled their solution kind of, and it is our roadmap. So for those of you who don't know, Upvoti is a tool where you can essentially crowdsource feedback and then add things to your roadmap. You can find ours at request.taskmagic.com. Um, and that's part of our build in public strategy. We're just like crowdsourcing all the feedback, um, what you want to see from the platform, and we'll build it as we get more upvotes. So there's a couple of these out there. We go into um, some of the pros and cons of building with a small team and bootstrapping specifically. So there's a lot of stuff in there that you might like. But he goes into how he's essentially scaled this to a $50,000 a month uh, business with really just him and a couple contractors. So it's very, very, very interesting. Um, take a look. Make sure to hit that like button if you do like this. I want you to like it. Well, actually, I'd like you to just hit it regardless because I give you so much value. <laughs> Hopefully, you're getting a lot of value out of this. If you are, please hit subscribe because that would help me out greatly. Um, if you want to hear more automation tips, small, solo and small team tips, um, bootstrap tips, a lot of those things. That's what I am here for. Make sure to say hi in the comments as well. And I hope you like this uh, interview. Thanks, guys. So you can hear me and everything, right? I can hear you perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Let me just check this. Okay, we got, we got, we're on the right mic. Okay, that's good. Let me put my ear, ear on. But I totally agree. I, I only listen to podcasts like 15 minutes, maybe max 30 minutes during my run or during my commute. Yep. So it's actually and fine. That's, yeah. the th that's the thing. So like, like, and that's part of this like building in public piece, right? Where you have done a lot of this building in public, right? Like over the years, I remember, I remember buying up Vody three years ago or something. Yeah, like it, it was a long time ago. And with like with most SaaS products, and I guess I'll jump right in. I'm skipping on my script here. But like, like with most SaaS products, like I usually like come and go. Right. I It's always like, cool, can I afford this amount of money? And that's, that's where I really like playing the game and building a SaaS product where there's obviously there's an there's a really big competitor I think we we won't name them by we won't name names here no on the pod. yeah but like I've always I haven't given them a dime but I've tried their freemium product and their product is really good um and but yours was practically the same thing but cheaper and I'm like as a cost conscious entrepreneur who has like a let's call it one, two million dollar a year company, right? Like right now and growing. It's, I'm always looking at bottom line. I'm like, ooh, do I want to pay hundreds of dollars or like 50 bucks it, for the same uh, thing? ratio. Yeah. Like I'm always doing that. Do I want to pay for, for $180 a month for Zapier or $9 for the same product? So like, Go, can you go into a little bit about like, and I know maybe price isn't on your mind when you're building this product, but like it is on my mind and it's on a lot of the people that who will watch this mind. So can you go into how you price the product and, and the good side of like competing on price? Well, it's actually a very fair point. And, uh, I'm the, the same kind of entrepreneur. Uh, I think most entrepreneurs are like that, right? Uh, you always look at the cost, uh, cost benefit ratio. So when I was starting to look into feedback tools for my previous SaaS product, um, you know, I found all of these tools that were either not so 
upgrade feature wise or they were very expensive so that's why that's what triggered me to building upvote actually so mm. i just wanted to build a simple but straightforward feature request tool for a fair price and that's what we build with upvote so it so price went into it right price, like price yeah, was one ingredient yeah would you say okay yeah so but but also always the cost ratio uh cost benefit ratio in mind so something can be very cheap. Why don't, why don't you explain that? Because it's, I, I just go, I don't have any money, Mike. Yours is cheaper. What is the cost benefit ratio? Yeah. So if you put in a dollar into software, what does it do for you? Does it make you money? Does it save you time? Um, so, and with Upvote, it's, it's pretty straightforward. If you have a user feedback software installed, and you can get feedback proactively from your users and you know where your time, money and energy needs to go to make your product better, to get more paying customers. It will definitely make you money, but it also saves you time because otherwise you have to do this manually, right? You have to reach out to your customers, you have to document, you have to structure all the feedback. Now you can just use Upvote and proactively gain feedback and know where your okay. money, your energy flows. Do is there something that at, like when you mentioned like a ratio, I'm thinking like fraction. I'm thinking like numerate numerator denominator. Are there actually things that you calculate doing that, or is this just like a like a no? Like, like a I said, we, we try to keep it very straightforward. So if you uh, if you compare us to uh, some of our competitors in the space. They have a lot more features, but they're all very in-depth for really big teams. Mm -hmm. They go they go into data analysis, etc. Um, so you you'll pay 10x the amount yeah. you pay with Upvoting, but is the cost benefit ratio that higher? I don't think so. For a B two B SaaS, for a small B two B SaaS, which which are most entrepreneurs in my space in the SaaS space, they don't need tools like that. You know. They're not Microsoft with hundreds or thousands of employees. So, so I mean, which is a good question. So, you if you make if you compete on price, I do. Like I, I, I think that I do believe it's a great strategy. A lot of people disagree with it. A lot of people do, and it's like time versus money. And it's like if you build software SaaS, you should be able to build it once, right, and sell it one million times, right? If you have the proper self-help docs or the proper roadmap like we use upvote um for like building in public and people can report bugs or features and we take care of them and it's on our Perfect. roadmap that it's at request.taskmagic.com so maybe we need an account to do it but um yeah like the funny thing we're learning is that's cool like you do let's call it make less money that's the assumption right because you're competing on price now it becomes like when you're a bootstrapped entrepreneur or a bootstrapped small team, the the cost to maintain it shouldn't be unreasonable. Like the cost to build the product is is drastic, right? I always say that it takes 80 construction workers to build a, an apartment complex, but four to maintain it. So how do you go into like being cost conscious around like maintaining a platform that competes on price? Does that make sense? Makes sense. Yeah. So I think uh, being able to envision the product like a, like a simple, straightforward product and building it that way, um, you know, based on price, we get more volume. Yeah. The customers pay less. Or than... you'd assume you'd assume you get more volume, right? So like, that's what my assumption would be, but you need 10 customers, if it's 10x, you need 10, 10 times the customers, which hopefully wouldn't bring 10 times the problems. Like, so that's yeah. what I'm just adding context yeah. to. Well, it's based on our target audience. It's, it's, it's what you prefer as target audience, I guess, as well. But um, I think if, if we could build out the product with more features and make it more complex, we could ask more uh, you know, more pricing, uh, uh, higher yeah. pricing, and we attract more enterprise software companies and teams, et cetera, which will eventually give us more revenue. But I'm a solo founder. We're a remote team. I don't want all of these problems. I don't want to serve all the bigger players in the space. 
I want to help entrepreneurs like us, you know, building our software yeah. products with small teams, remote teams, solo founders. I want to help them make a better product. So it's deliberately, I chose to keep it small, simple, and straightforward. That one, hey, I, can I tell you how beautiful and succinct your answers are? Your answers are wonderfully succinct. I don't have to like cut in, man. Do you do, oh, you do this somewhat for a living, right? Like you also build in public. Can you go in a tad yeah. bit about your experience, how building in public, I've taken it a step further and building and supporting in public, like YouTube is like our main, like yell at us. Yell at us in the comments. Yeah, you're doing great. Tell us the issues you have. Yeah. <laughs> Where it ends up being like, if we get like four or 500 views on a video out of like 3,600 subs or whatever it is, it's like 10% of views are comments so in a lot of instances. So, and it's great. I live for that feedback. It's amazing. It helps other people. It builds a community. You build Go a into community. your journey. Yeah, absolutely. So like, Go into your journey a little bit about how building in public has helped you make sales. So I started uh, building in public, I guess, around the time when I was building Upvoti. Uh, so it was my first international software product. So before Upvoti, I had a nationally focused product. So it was only here in Holland. Uh, so there wasn't really much to share, uh, but started mm -hmm. with Upvoti, I just wanted to share all of my learnings, all of my lessons learned over the last couple of years. And I'm building now for 10 years plus in software. So, you know, I have a lot of learnings and things I can share with the community online with other SaaS founders. And um, yeah, I just started sharing stuff and people liked it. And now it's becoming sort of a personal brand. You know, I have some sponsors, yeah. um, you know, it's it's fun. Whoa, to you're share big enough to get sponsors. A couple, a couple. Yeah. It's starting okay. to come. Yeah. Right. It's like that's good. Like I was just talking with a buddy who I, I had him on, and he has like thirty thousand subs on YouTube or whatever. Oh, I don't know. I won't say his exact number that he told me, but it's between like four and seven grand like per sponsorship. And it's like a video. And you're like, damn. Yeah. Right? So like you can get there and you can build in public. The problem is this. So you mentioned things you can share to people, right? And it's like, that's a real cool hook, Mike, with check me out. I, I'm going to share with you how I built a $1 million a year company. That's cool. The real building in public is show me the you're doing right now. And the, if you're being real, it's not, we have a million dollars right now. It might be, but like, I've been, Mike, I've had videos for a year and change that have like 18 views on it because no one gives a And I'm like building, like designing the product that's out now. So you're like, it's really rough when you're truly building in public. How do you feel like you could sell the come up, right? Like, here's how I'm building this versus everyone's interested in the how I built my $10 million a year company. Here's how I did it. It's like, come on, can we get the less yeah. PR version? And do, and I'm, but I'm starting to believe what I'm doing. I'm, I got lucky that we pushed through, but it was way harder than the hook of how I built my $10 billion company. What? Yeah. D does the sh does selling the because I'm going through this right now, Mike. Does selling the sh and the real hard work work, or do I just sell the sizzle? Sell the we're at two million. Everything's great. There's no problems. It's so easy for you to build a company. What is what are your thoughts on the realistic nature of building a company? Which I would wish this curse on no one, right? I would wish no one has to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> like no one wants to do this until you do it, right? Yeah. Or until you're successful doing it. How do you think about selling those two stories? And is there a pro and con to selling how you're building it versus here's how I did it? Yeah, so that's one of the reasons I 
quit making YouTube videos actually because mm. you know you have all of these algorithms and they only care about numbers and hooks and etc. And you know while I think it can benefit you uh, to work on the hook and to make sexy videos like that, um, I think you have to shift your mind from creating content for the algorithm to just document your own journey, just to look at three years from now, looking back at your own journey and seeing what you've done, what you've created, what you've shared. Mm. And people will love it because every every single day, someone starts with his, his or her business and they can benefit of all that you documented from the very start to the middle to even when you're at 2 million, right? Yeah. Um, even when always, you're at 2 million, Mike, what the f***? Like, how, like, uh, like two grand, you know, like, that's where I'm thinking, you know, like I'm thinking the, his, her, they, who has come up and like, who wants to start something, sharing something, right? Like, I don't know. It is the mindset that it has to be a certain, le you have to like teach on a certain level, you think? No, but you're growing to a certain level, uh, inevitably, you know, um, yeah. but if, when you're just starting out, just document your journey, just share what you're doing day to day, what you're trying, what are your failures, what are your, your successes, you know, um, and still to this day, I'm sharing all the basic stuff that I, you know, did 10 years ago, but I always say, um, what's obvious to you can be amazing to others. And if you remember this mm. saying, you can just basically share everything, right? And it's yeah. fun and it's it's valuable to others. Man, that's that is a great but I can tell you're a content creator because like you really are. You have ways to put dude, I'm just more or less I feel like my brand is like obviously process designer automation, right? Like that's clear. But I don't I have like four topics on building like that I want to talk to you about, and then I'll just riff. I'll riff with you, or I'll go yeah. with with the when you're at, do you actually do interviews or like when you interview on your, on your content, like, do you actually, what kind of content do you focus on when you're building or sharing in public? Is there a certain channel that you're using to reach them? What's working most right now for you that other people can probably learn from? Yeah, that's an interesting question because, um, some people reach out to me and they ask me, right, um, how should I start sharing? And the first thing I always ask them is, are you more a writer or more a filmer? What, what do you like mm. the most? Do you like to write or do you like to film? And I happen to like both, but I'm more of a filmer than a writer. So I am on Twitter, yeah. LinkedIn, and I love Twitter, especially X right now. Um, yeah. But I enjoy creating content for Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube more. So I'm, I'm creating... I'm, I'm creating clips, short clips with just, you know, 30 to 60 second valuable tips. Um, and I'm sharing them daily. Oh, cool. So I, is the, is the main channel YouTube then? I would say Instagram. Would, what, if you had Instagram. Okay. 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 Yeah. Instagram. I haven't, I haven't done Instagram when, like when you're, when you're my level, like, and again, like that's the one to $2 million a year range. It is, and by the way, for those of you watching this, uh, go back, go back one year from now, one year from, I go back one year from now, there are videos and some people have gone back and watched and commented and thumbed it up that have found me now, That's so found cool. us now, but like, and you can see it, there are 13 views on this video that like, that is actually me documenting what I'm doing. Just like, it's me doing a screen share with my face in the lower left-hand corner going, hey, Kyle, my CTO, uh, here's where we need to change where this button goes or this green text oh. needs to be here. Or like, and you're like, no one gives a <laughs> right? And that's fine. And those are so, so valuable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like where I was trying to do a video every single day, and like that gets really tough. So how do you balance building in public or making content with actually focusing on your business? Um, you know, since a year or two, I have systems. I, I outsource most of my product development. So I'm not a, I'm, I'm a non-technical founder. So, um, you know, you do? 
yeah, so I have I have a developer. Oh, we're the same, right? Um, the same. So I have a developer. Software is outsourced. Um, I have one or two development meetings every week. Uh, I do marketing. I have a couple of copywriters and freelancers that are doing stuff around the marketing uh, stuff. But, you know, I, I, I maybe I have four or five meetings a week for 30 minutes max uh, per mm. meeting. Um, and I'm free to do whatever besides so, those meetings, basically. Yeah. I have systems, automations. So, automations, that's what we're doing, right? So yeah. like, that's where I think everyone can take, and you'll have to come back on and we'll have to break this up. But like, that's what's most interesting to me about your story is I'm so interested in like building a product and there's no way around it, at least for me. You have to work your ass off at the beginning. You have to, right? You have to set up the systems, build the systems, talk to the team. Yeah. But as you, at one point, the company was 12 people, 15 people we had, right? And then we just like ebb and flow over the last three, four years. We build this product, we do this, we ship this, whatever. And now we're like to four people, right? And we needed 12 to 15, 15, 16 people at one point to build something, or I say, do we? Versus if you want to build and ship and build and ship and build and ship, or you want to fix and maintain, like we were talking about earlier, it's so, it's a different lifestyle. But do you think you can get around at all the two, three to five year window where you need to work your F and A off? before you can do what you're doing? Absolutely. Um, you know, at the beginning of, of building up Vodi, I was working seven days a week, uh, you know, 10, 10 hours a day. Um, because you're, you're a solo founder, I had my developer yeah. building, but I had to do everything, you know, and you don't yeah. know yeah. about the systems. You don't know about what is working, what you can outsource. Now I know content marketing and what kind of yeah. content marketing is working so I can just hire a new copywriter and we can scale the thing, you know? But it, yeah. at the beginning, I didn't know who to, who to target and how to target my audience yeah. and what kind of content to write. And, you know, you have all these bits and pieces that are all falling together, those puzzles falling together over time, you know? And you have to work your ass off and learn yeah. And then come up with assistance to automate and create that flywheel to really scale on autopilot. Yeah, like finding finding it like people are like, how do you know if you're ready to scale? And it's like there's two parts to scaling, right? There's finding product market fit, and then there's automation. Like yeah. you'll never ever get to scale if you can't automate your processes and systems. So automation is literally in every business. So two more questions for you. One. What's a good automation? Like if, for instance, I would call a good process or a good automation, like when you get a support ticket, you don't have to touch it as Mike, right? But it go, that support ticket goes right from whoever's at support or it's an AI bot, and then it goes right to the outsourced developer that you have. That just me, just me, I'm thinking, right? So like that would be a good process automate, automation. What's a good process that you think you have like automation wise? like? in your company that kind of saves you personal time? So we're working with tax a lot. So um, yeah, what, what you just said, when we have chat support tickets, we automatically assign based on keywords to the agent that is a specialist on the field. Um, so that's, that's one, uh, but we work the same in Notion or in Google Docs, mm. or we always work with tags and structures and uh, we came up with a system Tags. Where the developers, T -A -G -S. yeah, tags, tags, tags is everything. Yeah, I yeah. thought you uh, maybe it's the PTSD in me, but we just had extended our taxes. Oh. So like I, I heard taxes. No, so I was like, no oh, taxes. taxes. Maybe going, tags. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Tags. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. So uh, the last question for right now is, how do you get? How did you get or focus on those very first customers? Like, how did you acquire them? Like. I know you had built a million dollar AR, ARR company before Upvoti. Before Upvoti, yeah. built, for, Or was that Upvoti or was that before Upvoti? Before Upvoti, yeah. 
Okay, how did you get your first paying customers at Upvoti? So with Upvoti, for the first time, I launched a beta version, a private beta version. So what I did was simply ramp up a landing page with a sign-up form, started promoting it to my audience, to you know, uh, to know other platforms where my target audience was active, so Facebook groups, uh, indie hackers, etc. And um, after we had a couple of hundred signups, we knew we were onto something, and me and my developer started building the actual product. So mm. at first after we started landing. So landing page. Let me double click on this. So landing page. Was your audience big at that time? Um, or did you have any big audience? Not so big. Not so big. Okay, no. that's good. That's good. No. So, yeah. So like landing page, you pushed it out on Twitter or X, right? Maybe your little email list at the time, whatever. And yeah, then... we ran some ads. Um, we posted oh, you ran some ads. Group. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we ran okay. some ads. Ads is, okay. ads is a really great way to, especially if you can target on competitors. So if you can just pull up ads with yeah, alternative easy. to your competitor, you oh, get yeah, nice. immediately uses on your landing page. And if they sign up, you know, um, they're, they're the best audience you can have, right? Was the um, landing page sign up for access or what was it? Cause you can't just yeah, sign, sign up, up for, for better access. Okay. 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 Early access. And, um, so we created this list of a couple of hundred users, potential users started building the product with just one feature, one core feature, launched it privately, actively involved those, uh, beta users in private, used our own product to gain feedback. Um, so by actively involving them, we exactly knew what to build next. Yeah. So we built a yeah, feature yeah. set of like five features, launched the product in, uh, public. And actually before we launched public, we acquired the first thousand dollars in MRR from those beta users in private because they wanted more. They had a limit on the features. They wanted more, so they started paying. So before we launched publicly, we had the first $1,000 in MRR. And when we launched on Product Hunt publicly, within three months, we were at $5,000 MRR, something like oh, that. Oh, wow. So, and you, yeah. you would credit that to Product Hunt? I would credit that more to acquiring those early users and really talking to them and actively asking for look, feedback. Mike, because look, Mike. Sorry, I said because look, Mike, product oh. I got product hunt trophy. Oh wow! How did you get it? Because uh, V one, my last product was yeah, the product of the year. Oh, product of the year! Wow, congrats! Right. Thanks. Wow, that's well, goals. That's goals. Ago now. Yeah, there you go. Hopefully, cool. Task Magic. We haven't launched Task Magic on Product Hunt. Well, no, we launched a very, very, very initial version. Um, and I don't know, I don't know if you launch, we'll launch, we'll relaunch or whatever. Like it was a bullcrap version before. Um, but now, like you said, it's shout out if you're an app sumo ling in here. Um, but using and, and giving heavy discounts for feedback is why we launched on app sumo. And I am so indebted to those early users. Like, I don't know. There's some trust issues with a bunch of them. But like, we're here for you, right? We're here. I'm here. I think being public helps and building in public and releasing videos. I love you. I love them, right? So say hi. But how many of those like early users would you say on your platform like are still with you? Like a lot of them or none of them kind of churn? Yeah, we're talking about four years ago already. Yeah. Um, I know one of them is still with us. But I guess nice. our, our lifetime value is like one or one year, one and a half years. Uh, and okay. the breaking point is either or a SaaS product failed or they grew into this bigger product and team and mm. they will actually move on to one of our competitors with a bigger feature set, which is okay. You know, uh, yeah. we're not for everyone and that's okay. That's fine. Uh, but Do yeah. you ever think you could capture some revenue by making it easy to be like, Hey, export your stuff. Like, we'll connect you. We'll connect Upvoti to blank competitor that does more. Like, 100 bucks. You know what wow. I mean? Wow. 200 bucks. We, we, we have and, vice versa, actually, because sometimes oh. uh, users go to one of our competitors and they are paying too much for. A, no, but I'm, I'm saying to you, if they, if they left. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Like, 
you're like, that's, why that's not a great capture suggestion. $200, right? Like yeah. I would pay you that. What a beautiful send off. We'll make it seamless. We'll do it like, Hey, and we'll help you export it out at $99, hundred bucks, 200 bucks, wow. whatever. I would pay 200 bucks for that. And I'm going like, to write it down. And they're going to, they're going to move everything over there for me. Because I, well, I hear you say, oh, I'm acknowledging that they grow and big and that's okay. And it's like, why not capture some money on the way out? Yeah. You know? So like maybe, maybe even form a partnership. Correct. Oh yeah, exactly. I was doing that when people outgrew the tool V1 tool and wanted more, we were going to strike a deal with like a competitor to be like, Hey, I just want like a cut of whatever they pay you and I'll refer them to you. And I'll help them transition. So it's, so they'll have a better experience. And when, it was when, like, it was going to be like, I get 30% of their recurring revenue. So you're like, that's a brilliant model. F and model. Sorry, I forgot. I'm trying to really great model. Out. Yeah, I'm going to write it down for sure. Write it down and then we'll right, report right, back yeah. and we'll have you back on here. So is there Perfect. any last thing, any last piece of advice for the people watching? A lot of these people have like, bought lifetime deals, are building products, have agencies. They're small teams, most of them, um, or solopreneurs that are building uh, more or less software products and throwing them into the market. Any advice for them? Well, the biggest advice, my biggest learning ever is to focus on a really small target audience. So narrow down your target audience with all of your copy on your website, all of your marketing efforts, sales efforts. because if you nail it for a small group, if you can get them on board and let them pay for your product and validate your product, because only your product is validated when you have paying customers, right? Before mm, it's just an yeah. idea in your head, you ship it to the market, mm -hmm. you need paying customers. So make your target audience very, very small, make it awesome for them, and then expand slowly to other markets, other audiences. Only then you will endure the what I call the startup roller coaster. Right, so you have to figure out your product market fit first. But if you yep. make your target audience really small, it will be more successful and more easy. There you have it from the master, from the ma master Mike. Okay, Sensei Mike. <laughs> so, Mike, stay here because I need sixty seconds of your time after I hit the stop button. But thanks so much. Okay. Hit subscribe. Hit like. I'm not editing in this. So like. Hit subscribe, say hi if you've made it this long, but make sure to subscribe for more automation tips and how to make money being an entrepreneur.